Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. It's me, Paul Neal, as always, John Boy Tony, and Jeffrey Fays come in and join us here today. So uh, this is our transfer talk, and guess what video we're doing? Liverpool. Not really one I want to be doing. But anyway, um, we'll kick things off, I suppose, by talking about the ins so far. Solanke, Salah, and uh, Robertson from Hull. Um, out of the three, Jeffrey, I'll ask you first, which one are you most happy or excited about? Salah. Salah? Yeah. In pre-season, he looked like lively. What's that? He looked lively in pre-season. He's got four goals and I think he's like a real good asset for a team. Yeah, he seems to look like he's settled in. What, what do you think about Salah, Tom? Um, when they signed him, when they signed him first, I was, I, yeah, I was, wasn't entirely convinced because I'd, I'd watched him obviously when he played with Chelsea, and he was in, in and out of the team. He was loaned out a couple of times, and that and he, he looked a, kind of a, yeah, he looked a bit of a fancy Dan. You know, he, he was a bit of a luxury player. Um, yeah, well, he came well, in with a bit of a high reputation from so Basel, they, didn't he? Yeah, they were, they were calling him. Um, all, yeah, they were giving them all sorts of names, weren't they? Like the Egyptian Messi or something like that, and all the, you know, all this kind of thing. So he, yeah, I mean, and then he, he went out, um, he went out, and he played in Italy for a couple of years, and he, he, he impressed by all the counts over there. Yeah, um, but he was playing in the Roma team that finished second in Serie A every season. Yeah, you know what I mean, they're they a very good side. Whatever um, you say about the Italian league, Juventus um, do run away with the league a lot of the time. But Roma have given them a good run for their money the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Solanke, he looks decent as well. He scored there the other night in the Aviva. He's still young, so it's good to see that. I yeah. Think. How do you see him fitting in during the season? Obviously, with storage there I don't and think stuff he's like that. Play that much this season. Sorry. Mm. He's not gonna play much. You don't think so? Nah. Well, I think he will. What do you think? Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think he'll probably be in in, a, in the other team this year. But that said, you will know how injury prone storage is, so he might get his chance. He might get a prolonged yeah. run in the, the team. The weird thing about him is he doesn't look like a very skillful or anything player. He's just no. like one of those players who's in the six yard box and is scoring oh, goals, yeah. which is what Liverpool kind of needs. You know, they have storage, but if you look past that, it's not really playing down the middle. Coutinho, or Firmino, sorry, um, can come in. And he looks like he can do like he can do a job as a false number nine, mm. but not necessarily a got an out and out goal score. He look he gets you ten to fifteen goals a season, but he's no by no means pro prolific, you know. Well, yeah, you, you, I agree with you totally. Like if you look at Liverpool, and if they had a, a thirty goal a season or a twenty goal a season, man, they probably would have been a lot higher in the league. Sure. They scored, I think, the most goals in the league last season, or close enough. But they also had the obviously the broadest range of score, goal scorers. I think the top score only thirteen or fourteen goals or something. Like yeah. That. So that'll give you an idea of how the spread of goals across the team. So if you can add a twenty goal a season man to that spread of goals, you, I mean, you can't go, go too far wrong if they can short things up at the back. Yeah, like, and speaking of the back, then obviously they got Robertson, who I think is a very very good uh, left back. I actually wanted Everton to go in from because obviously Baines is coming to uh, the end of his tether there. He's, he hasn't got many years left. I don't I don't believe, but um, obviously he's have needed it. With uh, Moreno was out for most of last season. And Milner does obviously filling in there, so it also gives Milner more free range to play midfield now as well. But with Robertson coming in, are you happy with that? Do you think that he is the ideal replacement to also give Moreno the time he needs to settle back in? I think I'm the only Liverpool fan that actually likes Moreno playing left back. Like he's made a few mistakes, but he's one of the best left backs out in the club. Yeah. So I think he. Well, there's not many there. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The best of two. <laughs> but I'd rather him over Milner. Um, what about Flanagan? Oh, he's been in it for a while. He's been in it for a while. He's not that good anymore. I don't think he's much. Scouts Cafu. Yeah, I don't think he has much time left in the club now, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I was more or less just joking about it. You, you just wanted to throw him to Scouts Cafu, was it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to plug that in there. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but just in terms of um, then the outs, obviously, <laughs> Lucas Leiva, good servant. Wasn't really going to get much more of a look in there, really, was he? Um, you just have so many central midfielders there that are all kind of in their own different ways, but they're all playing ahead of them. Like you got Emery Chan, you've got Lalana, you've got uh, Wijnaldum, Milner to slot back in. You know um, who else have they got in centre mid? Um, you got Firmino, who's kind of yeah. an attacking midfielder. You got Coutinho, who can mix well. in there as well. He, he drops as well, so yeah, they, they they do have plenty of options. So in there. Lucas yeah. was, and he was filling at centre half as yeah. well at times yeah. as well. I'm just wondering, in terms of signings like coming in, where is it? Like, I just don't see centre centre back wise. Like, what else you have? Do you know what I mean? I think if we get 
I never saw the centre back, and I simply made we can qualify. Why well, do you think Van Dijk's gonna come? There's a lot of him he's handling a transfer request. He seems to want to play for for a club. It really is complicated to be honest. It's been like, since the start of summer. Van Dijk's coming to Liverpool. Please. Yeah, but he was tapped up then, and then Southampton didn't like that, which because a lot of the time Liverpool are buying essentially all their players. Yeah, I I, I thought the initial thing, the initial kind of link with Van Dijk was all I, I thought it was a load of. Both, to be honest. You can say it's a lot of bollocks. Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> it was an absolute cod because I thought that they, they, they literally went in for a player that they probably knew that they weren't going to get. And I think that seems to be a trait with FSG and, and the way that club is run at the moment. It seems to be a, smoke, a smoke screen. They're going in for the likes of Keita. They're going in for the likes of... Like they were linked with your man Dembele of Dortmund. They're never going to get players like them. I think the Keita's yeah. when they when in their meets. It, well, it, I do believe it, it, I, I just haven't seen Liverpool spend that much money. Like they were haggling for Salah for for ages yeah. over a couple of million. A bit like the way Everton are with Sigurdsson at the moment. They're just giving the money that they want. Like just, yeah, but just pay it. You're talking about a club like Liverpool who say the owners are coming out saying that they have loads of money and they have the money there to buy players. Like yes, then <laughs> yeah, they say they have the money there to buy players. Yet they're not. They're not if if you they're arguing over one and two and three million for players like Salah out of thirty five million, then where is this massive amount of cash that they say they have? They're gonna get a hundred million from Coutinho. I think you can pre- be pretty certain that that's gonna go through. The test would be that they go out and they sign Keita or they go out and sign Van Dijk, one or the other. I think both. they'll get one by the end of the the mark. I think Van Dijk will go. Well, I think they'll have to, or else Klopp will go. Yeah, well, I think even with the Coutinho money, I think that two of them might even come. Mm. But that argues the point of on the left hand side, obviously you've got Mane and Salah. One of them's gonna have to shift. But if one of them goes, who steps in? Yeah. That's the thing with Liverpool. Every year it's the best player and we can't place them. Yeah. yeah. Now I've got a couple That's of true. questions here that were asked by Liverpool fans, so I'm just gonna get them up here. Mm. Um in terms of questions that they wanted to ask. That's dreadful. Okay. Today. Yeah, sorry. If ever you come on the show and you want Paul to make coffee, just perfect. Oh, well, he likes it, <laughs> but he doesn't. Rubbish. Um. So, first question is: um, Will Liverpool keep on to Coutinho? Not even this season, but next season. So if they keep, him, if they can't keep him this year, is he like a bit like Suarez that year where he stayed for a year? And is he a certainty to leave then? Hundred percent, he's going next year. But I hope they keep it this year. Honestly. But next year, so it's not one hundred percent done this summer. But next summer, are you in the Noel or mm-hmm. is that they won't keep until next week? Let alone next summer. I think well, he's gone. The deal's gone through. Honestly, mm. like I don't want it to go through. Like he's mm. one of our best players. Yeah. Like Klopp said himself, the whole team's built around Coutinho. Yeah. So if he goes, then the team's just gone. Well, it shows their ambition if they're willing to sell him. This is a big <laughs> test for the owners and for and for Liverpool in general. If they keep him and they give maybe give him a new deal even. And, and actually build the club around them like they're saying they yeah. are, then you can be sure that they will kick on. If not, it's just the same old stuff that I'm sure you're used to every year. You know? Not every year. Every it's year. not happened that often. But they've been net spend a like hundred and a hundred odd million in the last five years. I mean that that's nothing for a club that wants to be challenging the way they're talking about it. When you look you know they have a net spend of seven hundred and fifty or something like that. Was, this just popped up on Facebook. Yeah, they, but they're not doing that either really. They aren't, but they're they're trying to you know, and then you've got City in there who are winning titles. I think they're five or six hundred Chelsea up there. You know, I kind of admire the fact <coughs> what Liverpool have done this this summer. Is they've gone out and tried to buy young to mm. to build a young enough team to try and build, which I admire yeah. more so than going out like City do and buy the best left back, buy the best right yeah. back, or you know what I mean. So developing themselves, like who have they ever developed? Mm, no, but, I, I I totally agree. But well, Daniel Sturridge actually did it. But unfortunately. The, the cities and the Chelsea's and the Man United's are going to buy past you. you you don't have time to develop and yeah. buy players and develop because I think that, that the ch- I think that'll change though. Well, I, I, I hope so I totally yeah. hope so because it, if it doesn't then there's no chance for the likes of Liverpool Everton even clubs coming up like Newcastle clubs that want to build you know that don't have the financial power of these top three or four clubs because if it doesn't happen like it, if they keep buying their way <coughs> forward, then nobody, it's just going to be a two or three horse race. Yeah. Year, isn't it? Yeah. So the other question um, that we were asked was, why halfway through the season, 
Klopp didn't seem to have a plan B when struggling against teams that sat behind the ball for 90 minutes. Uh, I call this with, with a couple of Liverpool fans of mine. Rare Liverpool fans that are realists. Um, and uh, they we kind of called it around October that they couldn't keep up the pace that they were playing at. They were 100 miles an hour. Everything was fast. They were closing down. And Man, it was electric. Oh, yeah. And like it, they looked brilliant. They looked a business. They were great to watch. But when you come into the Christmas schedule and you've got three games in a week and you've got seven games in kind of three weeks, you start picking up injuries, you get tired. That's a, that's a lot of games at that kind of tempo to pick to, to kind of play and to, to get yourself through for another half a season to go. So I think that's probably why they slowed down badly in the second half of the season. Um, if you're going to keep that up, you need to sign in January maybe and freshen things up. I think, I don't know what, like... I think that's only last year because we had no players in depth in the squad. Yeah. We have clubs playing style, it's like fast playing football, you know? Yeah. So we had no players in depth. So playing the same players over and over again with that kind of press and play, it's going to tire them out. Yeah. That's why we be like... Like they were burnt up at Christmas. Yeah, they yeah. were. Yeah, and especially after with those games, the amount of games you have, that's a new thing for him. He wouldn't have experienced that anywhere else. He'd like that he's managed because <coughs> so they don't have the tight, the, the massive Christmas schedule that they would have. Yeah, that they, have, they don't have that in Germany. They have a break, or Spain. at least it slowed down. Yeah, and in the Premier League, it's just all for television for us down the pub and everything. Yeah, to have so many um, The other question, I'll probably skip over because we kind of just covered it. It was kind of why can't Liverpool keep on to their best players? I was kind of touched off that mm. already. Um, why are they so shaken at the back but going forward on their day they're the best in the league? I argue that but uh, kind of similar to what you were saying there again wasn't it? Yeah like they're shaky at the back because they don't have good enough players at the back. To, yeah to I mean fair. Matip was you a know? good signing to bring yeah, in. Was, yeah. uh, Lovren he improved Yeah. To what from what you was Sacco is just rotting, rotten in the in the reserve. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. I think he'll have to leave. I don't know whether he'd even leave. I don't think anyone's going to pay the thirty million. No, that's that's a uh, bit inflated, hanging that, over his head. Yeah, he probably got him loan again. He might go to uh, overseas or something. But oh, yeah. I, maybe back to France. Yeah, possibly. I think. Um, but to, yeah, to answer that question, they don't really have the players, and they don't have the continuity. They get too many injuries at the back as well, which is in tune with the tempo of the football that they play and the style that they play. I think the partnership between Matip and uh, Lovren it's really good but defensively it's the fullbacks that cause the most problems Klein's good at attacking but defending I don't see him as a good defender and same with Moreno they can defend so we need like, de- mm. fullbacks that can defend but Robertson is he Champions League standard though that was not to touching on to the other question that was yeah. asked is, do they need to sign more players with the Champions League coming up and yeah, clearly they do solid players like yeah. Robson's average Premier League football but I don't see him like, playing well I think he could <coughs> he wouldn't say he'd be world class now but I think he could uh, under Klopp become a very very good player yeah um, he has all the attributes going consistent. forward he's very good skillfully yeah. he's good yeah. on the ball he's good at uh, crossing gets into good positions but defensively that's what that's the question yeah. is he good yeah no, I haven't really watched him enough it's hard to judge someone in a whole side where they're leaking goals yeah. When he doesn't have a lot of be, this season will be the will be the judge. Okay. It's like saying we were saying yesterday about the Pickford for mm. Sunderland. Will he be good for Everton? You don't know. Give him a season at yeah. least. Yeah, he's playing the worst team in the league last year. Yeah. You know that. It's a fact. You know, and like, while he looked he looked good at times. I mean, you, you know he's picking the ball <coughs> out of the net every week so many times. It's yeah. hard to judge, um, and he's gonna have to get a season. But the thing about the lad there that, um, that Liverpool assigned that we like he doesn't have a year you know they, they need players that are going to hit the ground running if they're going to get back into the Champions League yeah. next season and progress because and that's the, probably the worry for you as a, as a yeah. fan that they, didn't, they haven't signed Champions League great players they're signing potential which is fair enough but you're talking about a team that finished if I was a little fan four, I'd you know? be worried I would be too yeah. um, Very much just because so. the standard of the signings hmm. and the, the um, selling the best player yeah you know, if you're supposed to be going in, you would want the likes of Coutinho because against them, um, you know, top clubs, you want I mean, the top if players. Look at the team as a whole in the Champions League, they have no quality. Only Coutinho or Firmino sometimes. Mm. Playing Champions League football at that quality, it's Coutinho. Yeah. Me, Coutinho, 
without him. Without him. What about Mane? Mane is good, but... Like, is he not good? Yeah, but I and he was playing very, games mm. for Liverpool by himself, like Coutinho does. I don't see him doing it. Yeah, but Coutinho's very hot and cold as well. Like, Coutinho, he, he is very much hot and cold. He's, not, he's never been a, a whole season consistent. Name not one saying player, on the bar, maybe Jordan Henderson that Liverpool have had name one player in that team that is consistent Barry Henderson Mingle <laughs> um, yeah, consistently no right? uh, <laughs> when Sturridge plays he's consistent yeah. when he plays yeah. in a number of games yeah. he's consistently at a good level hmm. um, other than him Lallana yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, there, there were a couple of flash in the pan. There were a good few flash in the pan players. You've named Coutinho, Firmino. Um, Salah will probably turn out to be a player like that. Um, I think he'll be better than a flash in the pan. Well, yeah, we'll see. I think Emery we'll Chan's see. consistent in midfield. Oh, I Emery Chan? Yeah. Um, I don't know now. I'd say a few people will be giving you a bit of stick about that in the comments. <laughs> he's a good player now. But I, I like that. I I'll, get, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a comment just for that goal he's got against Watford. But yeah, that. he's a good goal though. And he's got nice hair. He's got nice hair. I like players with good hair. Yeah. Kind of like yours. Yeah. <laughs> Still <Yeah>. nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, I suppose, uh, is there anything else we, we, we need to cover? That you just want to cover? Or no, you feel like I, I've left out? Well, no, I mean, as we're, as we're recording this, I mean, we were only <coughs> saying just off air that um, the Coutinho deal is apparently close. And, I, like, we were also discussing that um, how imperative it is if they, if they can keep him but I mean that's the main thing around Liverpool at the moment that's going to define how they the yeah. rest of their window for a start but I think it's, it's it's imperative as well if they get Van Dijk yeah, yeah. I think I'll need him going into the Champions League but I mean you need something going forward to kind of spark his and score goals because yeah. without that creative creativity but who knows Salah might step up his game you never know he'll need that um, yeah so I suppose uh, thanks very much for watching don't forget to subscribe by clicking right here. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. If you've got any opinions or anything like that, leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching.